gentlemen, welcome back to another live stream. Happy fuck around and find out Friday. We got Powell Bernanke, I believe Yellen speaking a little bit later today too about monetary policy. The spy is ripping. We crossed 42069. All you weird meme people out there. Oh my God, dude. It feels like the other day where we were chopping around in that like 390 range. It really was. We were chopping around in this new range. We broke out higher. Let's see what's going to happen now. But the one thing that I want you guys to realize going into today uh, nothing has materially changed about the macroeconomic landscape of what we're dealing with right now in the United States. There's a very big difference, and I was tweeting this out this morning. There's a very big difference between a chart being bullish and macro being bullish. And that's why when you see most people try to trade macro, they just fuck, continuously fuck it up because they don't necessarily understand the differences. So again, be careful. I think it's very possible. At this point, it's 50-50. I think I'm going to wait uh, for the market to cool down a little bit. I probably won't be trading all that much today, if at all. Um, it's been a good week. Market's gone on. A, it's honestly squeezed. This was a little bit of a delta, uh, gamma, and short squeeze uh, that we've seen in the market. It's simple as that. That's what we've seen. Um, you saw Carl Icahn get fucking blown out, lose like $9 billion because he thought the market was going to collapse. And these are smart people, guys, that are that are entering in the market and just getting absolutely toasted. So again, we could still see some upward momentum today. Let's see what Powell has to say at 11. Um, I mean, again, I, I, what, why bother? What, why bother trying to trade this thing and make a little bit of money? Um, if you're going to see a lot of wild shit potentially happen. So team, again, as you guys are filtering in, make sure you guys slap the literal living shit out of the like button. Do not be a slacker today. I don't want to go on another rant on a fucking Friday about how you guys don't engage. You don't fucking take the time to watch anything. Uh, and then you just expect the market to come in here and plop money down in your pocket every single day. That's not how it works. Again, make sure you guys hit that like on the way and spread these streams out to some more people. Carl needs to use 1348. He does. Carl Icahn, hey man, I'll give you a lifetime membership. Carl Icahn, if you're watching this, I will give you, I will hey, I will pay for your lifetime membership to 1348. You're down 9 billion. You might be a little struggling for cash. I'll pay for your lifetime membership, buddy. Let's see. What platform am I, am I using for futures? Ninja Trader. But remember what I've said. Those of you guys in masterclass, I have to make some more videos for you guys, unless you're paper trading, which is fine to understand how they move. You have no business trying to fuck around in the futures market on your own, uh, especially with live capital. You'll fuck yourself and blow up. You just, like it's, it, it's really risky if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so let's see what we're going to get today, everybody. We have Powell at 11. Uh, I don't know. What else do we have today? Uh, Williams at 845. That's now, but like, who gives a shit about that? um okay let's have a good day huh and for all of you guys sitting on the sidelines with your thumbs in your butts which i don't know if you like that uh, it's kind of weird if you do if you're doing that to yourself even if, i don't know whatever next topic um but uh for those of you guys that are still sitting on the sidelines here remember everybody gets their first month free to trade1348.com use code gains g-a-i-n-z to secure your free month. Again, not going to be around forever. Um, so if you guys do want to get in, test out everything, all the tools that we offer you guys, uh, real-time unusual options activity, predictive proprietary algorithms, all the alerts, all the live streams, all the curriculum videos, everything, and the new tools that we're going to be rolling out too. Make sure you guys take advantage of that. Again, the barrier to entry is super low. Everything that you've ever wanted out of the market has been right in front of you the entire time. If you've been led to the slaughter, this is the place for you. So team, Take advantage of it. And for those of you guys, remember, masterclass prices will be going up. So um, that one-year master deal is not going to be around forever either. Um, so for those of you guys that want to hop into master, you guys have seen the streams that Gabe is doing with you guys in master every single day. You, I, you haven't seen any of my midweek masterclasses. We ha we're going to keep those inside masterclass and then our Sunday masterclasses as well. Um, let's do it, team. At, whoa like number 50 already okay i see maybe i feel like on fridays you just guys you guys something gets into you guys and you're just like fuck it i'm gonna hit the like button so again if you hit 500 we will do ankles for all you new people i don't really want to explain it again it's not weird i mean it is weird um but it's not like i like it's hard to explain it has to do with like house arrest things i'm not on house arrest never was uh you heard of this happening uh you had a one day expiration video put yesterday at 1240 in the five minute candle knife down to your price went the other way weeble glitch 
Uh, depends on depends on the uh the strike the ex uh I mean it should have increased in value. It depends on if it's like a what do you call it? Um, if it's like a deep out of the money, you could see that. Or IVs cranked, which it is on Nvidia, you could see that. Make no mistake, it's weird. All right, fuck you guys. I see how it is. I see how it is. It's sick and disgusting. Moto, you say the wildest stuff in here every single day. I say one thing about ankles, and you're like, dude, you're gross. Come on, man. That's not how this works. That is not how this works. All right, team. Oh, also, I have, after we finish streaming today, I'm literally just going to make, like, TikToks all day in, like, shorts and stuff. So if you guys aren't fu- and they're fire, they're gonna be like the ones that I made for you, uh, the one that I made for you guys this week. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram and TikTok, it's all short the Vix one, all one word. It's same thing as Twitter as well. Make sure you guys go follow me over there. We're gonna have some fun content for you guys. Uh, but let's see, we got what twenty four minutes to go until open spot. Losing a little. What is this fucker doing? Netflix, you fucking animal, bro. Netflix is just an absolute unit. Unit. Netflix said, I'm going to go do some wizard shit, all right? (laughs) The funniest thing, the funniest thing on Netflix is that if you look at it here, remember, this is hilarious how much it's run. Okay, so look, 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 ready? This candle here. So I had put off the 200 going into this day. I nail, I couldn't nail this, but I nailed it up in here. So I caught a nice drop on Netflix. As soon as it cracked this 200 EMA, I ditched the rest of it. Ditched it. Why do I know where to put my risk on some of these trades? Well, look, right here is where Netflix was. Guess what the price is? 334. 334 is where I ditched these. The puts, not calls. I'm not saying I missed it. I'm saying that I dodged a bullet here. Um, Because you did have this four-hour traffic like down, and then look, wee, oh, okay, okay, big moves there, and then, wee, and just fucking rips. So, we'll see what happens now. He also has white boots. Well, he's a poser. He's an imposter. Ooh, 20 likes away from 100. Thank you, team. Keep running up those numbers in the pre-market here. I love you guys. And again, for all you guys sitting on the sidelines, make sure you get your first month free to the trade1348.com. You will not regret it. Uh, what's up, SCV and Printer fam? Everything's closed yesterday except for the Moet stocks. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Bro, I saw somebody like post a picture. Like sometimes all that nonsense like gets put on my Twitter feed. That's why I say I'm not, like I'm like oh are these people just like circle jerking each other? This is prime example of Twitter circle jerking there's a picture with like some lady and then uh, the adam aaron and it's like oh my god thank you for being the best ceo and i was like bro i was like i was like all right lady i know some people that have right now or i could go find them that are in low supply of crack apparently from your actions on twitter you have like the global supply of crack. So if she wanted real Moas, she could just sell the crack that she's smoking to the people that I used to know who were smoking the crack also at like 5.30 in the morning at the golf course. I think that's a better idea than like glazing the fucking CEO that stole from you. I don't know, though. I don't know. Maybe I am the one without logical reasoning skills. I don't think so. It's it's a There's a non-zero risk of that. It's possible, but I doubt it. So, if that lady is in here, whatever crack you got, I, I don't even want I don't even want like the broker fee. Don't care. I don't even want for like putting the two parties together. I don't even want the the broker fee or the the commission on putting this deal together with all the crack you're smoking with all the crack they're smoking. So 
Okay. Back to the charts. That was a very tame rant. It was very tame. It's okay. Some people just want to be poor forever. They don't realize it, but their actions say that they do. I gotta, if that tweet pops up again in my feed, I'm gonna comment that. I was like, this is, I don't give a fuck. I was like, at this point, you just are stupid. All right, team, keep smacking that like button on the way and let's get some more people in here. We got 20 minutes until ding ding. Crack is cheaper than pot nowadays. Really? Ain't no way, bro. Oh, wait, it might be. That's a possibility. Not that I would know. That lady would know. I'm not the one over here smoking crack. Definitely got to be an OG to know the golf course crack story. Yeah, bro. Will I be staying on a little longer when Powell's speaking at 11 today? Nope. Nope. I got videos to make for you guys. That's what we got. They're still tracking what Ken Griffin's doing. They're fucking stalkers, bro. They're weird. Oh, not a hedge fund. Thank you so much for being a member of the channel for 15 months. Send in your love with the free chat. Keep up the good work. Not a hedge fund. I want to give a little shout out to not a hedge fund too. He had a little fun account that he was messing around with. And uh, uh, with all of the things that we have been teaching with 1348, um, in the, in the tools that we provide every single one of you guys on platform. Now, before I say what he did yesterday, this is not normal. Do not come in here. I mean, I know a lot of you guys are flooding into the platform every single day, but don't come in thinking that you're going to do this. He made 2,200% not on his trade on his account. I think it was, tw it was 2,200%, right? Like 2,200% on his small account one day. So again, guys, if you, if you, again, if you listen to the things that we teach you guys, you have a much better understanding of the market. And again, I posted that debt ceiling video for you guys yesterday. Those are things you have to understand uh, about where we're going in the market. And some of you guys still haven't seen it yet. So again, pay attention or pay a premium. If you want to actually learn how things are going, make sure you have notifications turned on for the channel. Follow me on all the different platforms here. And let's make you guys some money. Spy slipping a little bit in the, uh, in the pre-market here. Nothing great. Netflix, where are you going? Where are you going? Ah! Ah! Been using 13 per day for two weeks, up 10% per day on average. That's fucking insane, Steven. Congrats, man. Again, yeah, for all you guys lurking in the live chat here too, I mean, I'll throw the link in here for you guys, Code Gains. It's free for your first month. Free. You guys don't take advantage of that. Again, like I said before, some people just want to be poor forever. Not that they actually think that, but their actions show that. We're just going to keep sitting here, though, making thousands of dollars a day in the market, printing, going to the playground, doing fun shit, and working with you guys. Sounds good to me. You guys want to be a part of all this cool stuff? You are more than welcome to come in. All right, what do we got here? Like 17 minutes to go until the ding ding. Ding ding. I'm like not even really excited for the ding ding today. Like, I because I don't really want to do any trading. Like I do, but like nothing crazy. Baba. Down a little. Where's AMD in the pre-market? Down a percent. That's fair. Nancy's down a dollar. Dude, the spy is at fucking 420. Oh my god, that's insane. Uh spent your first month learning in paper trading. Took your first real money trade yesterday for 25% gains. Terps life. My man. Is it playground a strip club? Nope. Uh took a little break. Now I'm back. Hitting 95% of your trades this week. Breaks are good sometimes. Exactly, buddy. Sorting sin. Congratulations, dude. Playground's not a strip club, guys. I'm not just like fucking willy nilly in it to the strip club every weekend. I'm not. That's not how this works. I meet a lot of cool people at the playground. Like I met the guy who's creating a. Um, he was he was at uh, 
one of my tables one time. He's creating a um like a Robin Hood type like with like okay, that's a wrong way to put it. It has the user interface of a like Robin Hood, but it's a uh it's like an options trading platform for crypto. And I was like, that's fucking cool. I like that. Uh, are we looking for power to push us upwards as usual? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. We got to see what he says. I'm honestly, I mean, I'll watch some of it. Maybe I got uh, videos and shit I got to do for you guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're talking about monetary policy. So usually when these things happen, like these these meetings and these conferences, there's not any earth shattering like, oh, this is that. Like it's there's no new things that come out. But since where we are in the market right now, uh, in terms of the the hiking cycle, um, I think they could make some interesting statements and reiterate some of the things that uh, other Fed speakers have said this week that could send us lower. I don't know, though, man. If they're going to say whatever the fuck they're going to say, and then the market's going to react, and the next week we'll get after it again. Netflix is going to go down across to the three and five. You saying up? Yeah, up, yeah. But this thing, if you look at this on the daily, bro, it looks like it just like saw Margot Robbie. Look at this, bro. Boom. Times Powell, 11. Powell's 11. Like, dude, like, literally, Netflix looks like it was walking around in the street. He's, uh, like, just hit puberty and saw Margot Robbie. D -d 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 Bing! Like, Uh, life changing money could be seeing uh, Nvidia die. It's not gonna. It's not gonna. Uh, you look at this on the daily again for all you guys sitting on the sidelines again with your thumbs in your asses. Look at this daily traffic light on Nvidia back here. What happened? Okay, where are you getting this? Maybe you want to wait for this retest of the two hundred. You're getting it at one sixty eight. It's at three fifteen, bro. That's almost a double in shares. You played options with this thing. Your life is forever changed. That is the power of the traffic lights, the power of 1348.com. And the best part is that you guys get it for free for a month. Pay attention or pay a premium. You miss stuff like this, you are going to be kicking yourself. And then also, Gin and I have been yelling at ourselves for the last week here because guess we're on this chart right here, on this chart. Where do you think we bought NVIDIA calls? You aren't worthy enough to speak your name? We, Gabe and I were buying NVIDIA calls here at 262. We've been looking at this chart. I mean, we've made a lot of money on NVIDIA over the last few, like month. Um, the problem is, is that if we had just kept our initial position, we, I probably would have made mid six figures. Yeah, it was 263. I probably would have made mid six figures on that, which kind of pisses me off. And the other thing too, is I miss fucking Tesla. I like, I knew it. I was all over it. And I was scared of that gap down below, took a little bit of a gain on it and just left. So, I mean, the swings have been great. I've been nailing SPY. Uh, the SPY swings have been great. I'm gonna, I'm probably going to look to set up another one pretty soon. Um, it's going to be a little bit different just because of where we are in the market. Uh, it'll have to be hedged a little bit. So if I grab a bunch of puts, I'll hedge it with some shorter dated calls. That's probably what I'll do. Just in case. Uh, all right, 12 minutes to go until open, guys. Keep smacking that like button on the way in. You guys are ripping it today. There you go. Let's see if we can get to 150 before open. It's gonna, why though, Leo? Like, it could easily just rip up here and hang out. Like, you, unless you're saying earnings, but the thing is, is what do you think they're gonna say on their earnings call? AI, 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 AI. Like, they're gonna just fucking spam the AI key. And just be like, all right, like, and it doesn't matter. Like, fair valuations in the market are irrelevant right now, and they've been irrelevant basically on the, a lot of these growth stocks for like the last ten years. If you were going off of uh, like ratios and, and things like that, um, there's a statistic that like the Nasdaq uh, QQQ was way, 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 way overvalued, and I think, I think the time period was like 2012 when when uh, people were screaming that this thing was way overcooked you miss like a double or triple or something. Like, again, 
it, it's a very, very different game than it was 30 years ago. The reason being is because you have so much technology now that's just rapidly coming out and low rates and money printing. So you have to then account for the inflationary ass elements of the market in these calculations. Now, if the United States government is going to not necessarily lie, they're not lying, but they are basically not telling the whole truth with where inflation is, it's very hard to get a fundamental value of these companies and where they actually should be. So when people are talking about like fundamentals and stuff, you always take it with a grain of salt because nobody fucking knows. Dot com crash? No, but I think it definitely could be. Like I think Wreck-It Ralph. So I think that the when people are talking about this AI bubble, it's not like it, it's it started too quick. Like how long have we been in this AI nonsense for? Less than a year. Less than a year we've been messing around with this AI nonsense. So like it's going to take time. I think it could take three to five years. So maybe we get... And the problem too is here's the other issue. When people start to hunt for crashes, here's what's most likely going to happen. Yeah, six months. Exactly. So here's what's... All right, we're going to do a little bit of fun stuff for you guys so that you guys can understand things. Okay, this is what happens when people hunt for crashes. Right now, everybody's expecting NVIDIA and these AI stocks and to, to be in a bubble right now. Cool, that's great. You're missing a very key point. What happens uh, in the middle of 2024 when we go back to a low rate environment, when the government, or not low rate, but declining interest rate environment, when we start backing off and the Fed starts buying bonds, basically turning back the money printer on? Well, more inflation comes back into the market. The debt ceiling comes up, which is inflationary. Okay, so you have more inflation. NVIDIA could end up at, let's say, five, 600 over the next eight years before this AI nonsense happens. So you're basically, and then let's say it goes from 600 to 400. It was just at 160, you could have bought it. So when you hunt for these things and you play macro like that, like people, again, there's a, di like I was saying in, on Twitter and, and saying this morning, there's a very big difference between the chart looking good and macro. If you think macro bubble, all this stuff, you're basically trying to outsmart the market. Don't do that. So yeah, you might get one big move in eight years, but you have so much opportunity now that you're foregoing because you think that these things are overvalued. Does that make sense? They've been talking about AI much longer than that. Yeah, but ChatGPT really started it off. So, all right, guys. Oh, my God. We got a lot of slackers on the like button in here this morning. Keep smacking it on the way in. And remember, everybody gets their first month completely free to trade1348.com. There you go. There you go. Don't let yourself get led to the slaughter, man. It's happening every day. People are just getting led to the slaughter. Not us. Free market look, uh, AMD looks ready to take off again. Not as good as it did yesterday. Yesterday was uh, killer because what were we talking about in the pre market with AMD? It was chilling up here. What did we say? Three minute 200 EMA retest. Started to move off of it. I bought, I drilled it up into here. I could have held it, but I just nailed it for like 35% and was out. Netflix teeter in 370. It's got to break this 369.08 and then this down in here, uh, this 365. So you flashed it in the pre market, but. Let's see. Is there data today? No. Uh, greetings, SV and the team back in New York. Ready to make some more money. Hope you all kill it today. There you go, Kelly. Let's do it. My big brain relative strength friend uh, is losing his mind. And his money trying to time a crash. It's sad. Yeah. AMD daily RSI 79. Dude, I know. Everything's cooked. Everything's cooked. Let's see what Papa Powell brings us today. Most people don't have the money for any of this tech. Most people are struggling a lot more than people think can't even afford food. True. True. Corporations can afford it, though. Governments can afford it, though. That's where most of this money is made anyway. It's not the consumer. It's corporations and government. Back to trading options. Ready to kill it? Let's do it, Tyler. Make sure you're getting enough time, buddy.
about to say. All right. Five minutes. Five minutes to go until the ding ding. Did Kyle get delayed to 3 p.m. from 11? Not that I've seen. Not that I've seen. Where are you seeing that? It should be 11. <laughs> Let's see. Only next Friday is today. Uh, Tyler, I'm probably not trading today. Like, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I'm probably not trading today. I have some already open positions that I'm going to probably do something with. But other than that, I'm probably not doing much. You're waiting for your funds to settle on trade then it's showtime. Well, unless you've paper traded for like a month, I probably wouldn't do that. But again, I've said it enough. You guys can make your own decisions with your money at the end of the day. Go for it. If you're going to do, if you're not going to listen, go for it. Top steps letting you trade three accounts at once now. Like you can merge them. So if you get like 100 or 150 or whatever, like two 100s, one 150 or whatever it is, then you can just merge. That's kind of cool. Maybe I'll do one of those. I don't know. I mean, I can flip this futures account pretty quickly. Yeah, I see Powell still scheduled for 11 as well. Good morning, Vix. What up, Alga? Oh, robot trading and copy students to other accounts? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, actually. All right, spy at this 3 minute 48. <sighs> okay. Here is one of the things that I am looking at today. It's a little far away. It really is. It's a little far away. I mean, you've got this 200 here, but this is like breakout retest of this of this top, uh, uh, what do you call it? Previous resistance turning into new support for 1840. Isn't it higher though? Is that the one that was higher that we had to move around a little bit? No, no, no. That's a different one. That was a different one. Also, if contracts are juiced, I'm not touching them. They are going to be juiced. You uh, is putting a thousand at Bed Bath Beyond because of tinfoil stupid. Um, let me think of an analogy for this real quick, and I'll get back to you. Oh, here's one. It's put. It's like putting your dick in a meat grinder. Now, do you think that's smart? Up to you. Spy slippage into open. Or cheese grater. Yep, that's what it is. Meat grinder it is. Why are you buying bankrupt stocks? Why are you being stupid? This is, hey, Robert. Okay, when I say these things, this is always me trying to help retail. Like some people may not realize that. Um, but if you're going to keep throwing your money willy nilly at these fucking terrible stocks, um, you're going to end up with no money. So when I say this here, you have to realize that this is always me trying to help you. One, one stock is not going to make you fucking rich. So stop trying to make that happen. Bed Bath Beyond is a piece of shit company. Okay, two. It just went into bankruptcy and got delisted. It's now OTC. Why wouldn't you focus on the things that you can consistently make money in and stop buying lottery tickets? Uh, institutions call retail investors dumb money for a reason, and it's because of what you're trying to do right here. They're correct. Retail is stupid. That's why we've tra uh, created Trade1348.com so that you guys can like stop doing this type of shit and you realize how markets actually work and how to actually make money in them. I can't help you unless you decide to let me help you. So again, you guys can get mad at me all you want. Do you know who's been spot on correct the entire time? Me. So ding, 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 market open. Here we go. 
Netflix, Sharkin. Let's see. All right, scaled out of Netflix. That's good. Took a lot of money off the table on that. All right, I'm going to throw a wild limit. If it hits it, it hits it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, kill it, bitch. Yeah, kill it. Get down below there. Sorry, I'm a little spicy today. <laughs> What about BB? Any of these low folk bullshit socks are stupid, guys. All right. I'm up like 11% on them. I think. This is like freaking me out, this stock, because it loves the wick. We're spy. Spy slipping 420 here. All right, guys. Keep smacking that like button on the way in. Let's see if Netflix can break this three minute 200. Yep. Are they going to film me on this? Come on. Film me. Film me. Film me. Film me. Film me. How are you not filling that? Yeah. Order filled. Cool. That's all right. I've taken a lot of money off the table on Netflix there. I'm up 2% on my account for the day. Now I have a much smaller position that I'm perfectly fine with letting ride. Cool. Done. Easy money. That's the only trade I'm going to make for the day. Thank you. Great job, team. Easy money. When stocks pump wildly like that, you can easily make money to the downside. 1348 gang for the win. All done. All done. I mean, I still have some, but we'll just see what happens there. Let's see. Go team. Go team. Easy money. Easy money, baby. Give me that, Netflix. Give me that. Break that level. Break it. Yeah, that's probably all I'll do today. Scale out. Let these things go. See what Powell has to say. Spy back above 420 here. Where's AMD? Nothing. Nancy, nothing. Hold on. All right, let's see what we get here. Tessie's screwing around, not doing too much. I don't know, man. This is just craziness in the market. I just have, like, no interest in it today. After yesterday, like, yeah, I caught my candle. I'm done. It's 5, 4.31 today. Nice. See, the other thing, too, is that if I wasn't streaming, I would just, like, be done. I would walk away from the screens, but I'll walk you guys through this. It's fuck around and find out Friday, man. Ooh, team, we are 14 likes away from 150 as well. And we have, oh my God, we have over 100 of you slackers in here that haven't hit the like button yet. Are you going to make me go on? 
another rant again about this. Me taking all the time to do this and you guys can't do the one thing. I... All right. I see how it is. I see how it is. Let's go golfing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> do any of you guys real? Do you guys know what that's from? Uh, Wreck it, Rob. The way that you just like the the way that you just uh Tassie popping. Uh, the way that you said that on the live chat like sounds like this. Let's go golfing. Let's golf. <laughs> Does it, is that just like a is that just like a young person thing that we understand, or is this like you guys would understand that? No. It's a, it's it's DJ Khaled, bro. He's he's gotten into golf, and if you see his if you see his no, it's not crack. If you see his like random golf things, he'll be saying something completely normal mid sentence. He'll just look at the camera and just be like, like just in the middle of him like saying like we're gonna go eat a sandwich. We're gonna do let's go golfing. All right, we're gonna do. That. I'm like hold on, bro. <laughs> ah. It's hilarious. All right, guys. I see what you're doing now. Get those likes up to 200 here. There's still over 100 of you guys that haven't hit it. Costs you nothing to do. It helps us out a whole lot over here. Spreading the good word of what we're doing for retail investors in a way that nobody else can or ever will because they just love to lead you to the slaughter. All right, let's see. Tessie shooting here a little bit. Where's Netflix? Yeah, I mean, it's chilling. Though. Oh, come on. Come on. Give me that. You have to see that, bro. Just look up DJ Khaled golf. He has one where it's he's he's the I was laughing so hard at this last night, dude, where it was. There we go. Um, It was him making a video saying that Justin Thomas was going to win like the PGA. And he was like, it's he's literally just spamming quotes. He's just like, they didn't believe in us. Justin did. Let's go golfing. It's like, bro, what goes on in your head? All right, let's see if Netflix can break 265. I am up 17% on my Netflix puts. Thank you. Low hanging fruit. Thank you, Masterclass. You guys know the deal. It's early, bro. I forgot to slap the like, but it's there now. I, I see how it is, bro. You guys just love the slack. And you're just like, nah, not going to do it. Don't want anybody else printing with us. It's Tessie, nice little move there. So Netflix has got to break this. This this uh two this 365 level is these levels of support from yesterday on the five-minute time frame. I mean, it's also on the three-minute, but it really shows itself on the five. Spy trying to move back up. Tessie is ripping here. I mean, I'm not touching that. If you get a retest, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but I don't need to do any more trading today. You love when he gets the golf cart stuck? Yeah. Dude, he's so f stupid, but so funny at the same time. Let's go golfing. Oh, Netflix. Netflix. Nancy, what's up with Nancy? Nancy down. Nancy slipping to these levels from yesterday. Uh, 312.50. Bouncing off of that right now. Spy turning up. Yeah, bro. I've made I've made a, a decent amount of money today. Not bad. Not bad from the smartest 23 almost 24 year old you guys know. All right, let's see. Quick 40% on Amazon level reversal 1 minute die gap. My man, there you go. There you go. Let's go golfing. Fuck. What? God damn it, Wreck-It Ralph. Why'd you have to put that in my head? Oh, that just hurts. What's the level? Three. Yeah, it's 365. You got to break. If you break that, uh-oh, SpaghettiO is what I have to say. I mean, you do have this, 360, 382. If it really starts tanking, 
Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see. I'll hold these. This position I'm fine with holding. AMD can't make up its mind. Let's go shut up, wreck it, bro. Yeah, I mean, AMD, after the week that it's had, I'm not touching it. We drilled it yesterday. Um, after the market squeezes like this, I don't have any interest in fucking around and finding out with any of this here. Like, Tessie could have been a good scalp. Uh, Spy was hunting this three-minute traffic light to the upside, but you do or you are going to have a lot of this resistance up in here. Uh, for Basically, what is this? 420.90? Yeah, Netflix right back up. Like, I'm fine with that. Give me my money. I'm done. Yeah, Pepe. It is better than Hey There, Delilah. You're going to get that stuck in my head now, too. Assholes. And Google's still running, is it? Where's Baba? Baba doing nothing. AMD chopping. If it can get above that three minute 200 here, that could be interesting, but it's almost the inverse of what happened yesterday where you were below the two. Fuck you. Um, where you were now you're below the three minute 200. You could, could just come back up, retest it. And then by the time Powell speaks, it could just be knife land 9% so far today. 1348 gang for the win, bro. There you guys go. Yeah. So we'll watch AMD for a bit here. Got to charge the mouse a little bit, but all oh, team, there's still over a hundred of you guys that haven't hit the like button. Suckers! Maybe I'll just end the stream early today. I've already made money. I've, I'm already chilling today on a day that I didn't really want to trade anyway. All right, bro. Amanda, I kind of want to throw Spy back on here instead. Just do this. We'll chill and watch the spy. Nine forty-two. I don't. I. I don't know. There's no data at ten today. Played that Nvidia. Of uh, oh, the fifty bounce. Nice stop loss at ten percent. Just gonna chill now. Let her do what she wants. There you go. You should end early. Let's go golfing. Fuck you, racket, Ralph. Dude, I don't even have my clubs. My clubs are in Florida, so I can't do shit. Spy coming up here. It gets this candle close above. That's a decent retest there to the upside. Well, am I touching that? Nope. Let's go golfing. Let's see. All right, team. Jerome Powell's coming. Fuck your puts. Fuck your calls. J Powell has you by the balls. All right, here we go. <laughs> Tessie 179 of 1.2. Netflix. Netflix flashing. Flashing, flashing 365. Here we go. Look at this. 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 Fuck your woke movies, Netflix. It's STV's time to hammer you to the downside. Ever since you watched Gabe's free masterclass, I haven't lost a trade. Guys, I'm telling you right now, masterclass prices will be increasing if you are interested in hopping in there with us. Go to your subscriptions area, click Get Master, because there are a lot of things coming, and you do not want to miss out, bro. Hold up, that was actually funny. Um, it's from the it's from the AI generated Powell videos. They say it in all of them. It's hilarious. So Netflix, if it gets a candle close on the three or the five minute below 365, I would say, uh oh, spaghetti. -o. And and also that wick there, if it can take that out. Yeah, invest in yourself. I mean, the RSI is hot here, but also it was hot. It was at fucking like 85 yesterday. So whatever. Spy. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if it cracks. I'd love to hit like a nice trade here off of the scale out. Like I've already locked in like. I probably 13% on the trade. 
I think they're sitting at like 20 right now. 20%. Yeah, 21% on them. How the hell does Morgan Stanley give a 160 price target from previous two uh, dollar target on BHG a penny stock? I mean, they're pumping. Where do I think the spy's going? I think it's going to chop around and do nothing. Honestly, that's what I think. Until Powell speak. Yeah, here's a Netflix knife. There we go. Yeah, I just tweeted out the uh, the gains on Netflix too. Um, so if you guys won't mind, let me hold on. Let me grab the link to that tweet. Go run up that one. Drop a like. Drop a retweet. All all trade thirteen forty eight concepts, man. It's all those concepts come into fruition, and it's exactly what I was talking with you guys about in the Wednesday masterclass. Low hanging fruit. This is exactly an example of a low hanging fruit trade on Netflix. Twenty two percent on them. That's not bad. I like that. I like. Morgan Stanley being irresponsible with that price target. Yeah, bro. They all are. All the banks are irresponsible with price targets. They're just pumping. That's all they're doing. It's pumping with a thesis. It's like, just make the numbers look pretty and fucking send it out. That's what they do. The banks are the real pump and dumpers. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Dude, if Netflix gets to 358, this level down here, this is going to be epic. Rivian on a moon? Is it now? Oh, yeah. I mean, again, for those of you guys sitting on the sidelines, Three-minute traffic light at open. You could have just made a bunch of money, but you decided that you wanted to go listen and follow somebody else's trades like a fucking idiot. Um, so again, you guys would have gotten that alert, but you were too lazy. So again, here is the link for your free trial, code GAINS, G-A-I-N-Z. There you guys go. I mean, I'll just keep sitting over here printing, showing you guys how it's done every single day. I'm up, I think, now. I was up like 15% at one point this week, but that was like the height of some of the swings. I'm up 13% this week. That's pretty good. I'll take that. That's nice. That's nice. Weird how we both swung Netflix puts, or maybe not so weird. Yeah. Uh, where do you find the masterclass sign up, Todd? So the masterclass sign up on um the the Trade thirteen forty eight platform. If you're already a member, what you do is is you you go to your subscriptions area, and there's a little button that says Get Master. You click that. It's really, really seamless, and you are all good to go. You get all of the morning streams with Gabe where he's live trading. There's a delay, so though, and again, he fucked with you guys yesterday because nobody should be follow trading. If you start follow trading and I hear about it, I am kicking your ass right the fuck out. That is not how this works. But you get to see the thought process and watch him every single day. Second, you get uh, my midweek masterclasses where we go over a variety of topics, um, all super helpful. I know a lot of you guys have enjoyed those. We come together on Sundays for masterclasses as well, so you get a lot of streams and educational content every week and thigh gap and all the new charts and all of the new tiers, and, or not tiers, new products uh, before everybody else gets them. There's also some other stuff that you're going to get to in the future once we roll that out. I just can't say what it is yet. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys are hopping into masterclass. It is, it is just Really, really, really awesome. Netflix bounced. Whatever. Fuck you, Netflix. <laughs> That's what I have to say about that. Disney swing puts paying off too. Nice. You took anti-woke positions, apparently. That's what I did. Dude, I tweeted that out. I was like, fuck you and your woke-ass movies, Netflix. Like, when a month? Uh, the thing that I'm referring to is going to take a little while. But again, the prices will be going up, so don't miss it. I gave you your first warning yesterday. Make sure you guys are hopping in there, or else you're going to get left behind. So same thing goes for you guys that aren't in there yet with your, your free trials. So if j is hawkish, isn't that bad for tech? It's bad for everything. You would see markets sell off. 
Spy coming back down. How is Netflix so big in the market? It sucks. It just says, I don't know. It's just, it, it, I mean, you see any stock that's a big component of any of these indexes go on a, like a giant fuck you move. It's going to move things around. So again, this level here, three, uh, 365 is important. If it breaks this, I'll probably just cut the rest of them. NDX, do I ever trade it? No. No. I also, I mean, I don't trade QQQ. I don't trade uh, NQ. I just trade ES. And like in the options account, I trade SPY, Tesla, NVIDIA, and then anything else that I really like. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't trade NASDAQ. All right, let's see what we're going to get here, team. Test you with a nice retest of the 3 minute 48 there. Again, you guys are going to, I'm going to walk through charts as if I were to trade them, but I'm not. Like, I'm not done. I'm not doing shit today. You start trading QQQ, you wake up every day and ask yourself, what would Diamond Dog do? There you go. There you go. Oh, you guys are scanning the QR code? There you go, team. Use code GAINS and you are all good to go. I never answered your question. What was your question? I don't know what your question was. Yeah, also, guys, if you want to learn a little bit more about the debt ceiling, the debt limit, and how this actually works and why this is so crazy, I posted a video on it yesterday. Make sure you guys go check that one out, too. Um, most people have no idea what the debt ceiling actually is, how it works, why it's important. Um, make sure that you guys go watch that one. That's a very, very important one. Used his teachings yesterday in one. That, I mean, again, man, it's, it's master classes fire. Make sure you guys are hopping in. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, I mean, we're uh, fuck. We are coming into ten. I mean, I'll just like practice with some shit and just kind of. Map out some stuff right there. Right there. Let's go golfing. <laughs> Shut wreck it, Rob. D do you know what I'm referring to? Are you just like taking what I said earlier in the stream about DJ Khaled and then just saying it? Like, that's cool too, but like. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Todd, no problem, dude. No problem. Hopefully you found it. If you have any more questions about it, shoot me a DM. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, probably not TikTok. I probably won't respond to you guys on TikTok. Spy traffic light up, <clears throat> flashing it. Let's go golfing. Netflix, another test of that three minute 200 up here. Let's see. You saw it yesterday? Yeah, it's hilarious, dude. Okay. scaled out of some more netflix now i have a really riskless position on this thing and now i feel a lot more comfortable maybe he just wants to golf no he doesn't he knows what he's doing Ooh, guys we are 15 likes away too from 200 thank you guys i appreciate your support each and every day on the streams
When's Powell? Uh, an hour and five minutes. So at 11 Eastern. Yeah, you guys are slacking today. You guys started off hot, and now you're slacking again. We got over 100 of you guys in here that haven't hit it. Slackers. Who's going to be the lucky number? Let's go golfing. Fuck you, Wreck-It Ralph. That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> Kidding. But yeah, Powell's at, uh, Powell's at 11. Huh. 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 E.S. Maybe I'll like size it down today on E.S. I mean, guys, the other thing too is I know all you guys saw my gains on the uh, Futures account yesterday, almost a thousand bucks. What you guys have to remember is that account is still small because of the identity fraud shit. Like I couldn't put more money into it. So I'm only trading with two ES contracts. Like it's a lot, but at the same time, it's like that's pretty fucking good for a small account. Um, again, I may not even need to make another deposit. I can just keep running that account up. So we'll see. Um, I might do something with it today. If I do, I'll probably just size down. So if I were to do anything, I'd probably just trade one of them, one ES, just just a bite. Um, ideally, I want to be trading with like between five and ten. Um, but the fucking scammers didn't let me do that now, did they? Bring out the lobster. <laughs> Let's go golfing. Fuck, dude, you can't get this in my head on a Friday. On a Friday, bro. Let's go golfing. Where's Rivian? Still pushing. Nancy. Slip, slip. Nice bounce there, though. Nice bounce there off this level. Let's go trading. Bro, imagine we got DJ Khaled to say that. We just do like a cameo with DJ Khaled and instead of let's go golfing, let's go trading. <laughs> That would be so epic, bro. All right, three likes away from 200. Let's see. All right, we're coming into 10. ES is doing fuck all. I, yeah, I don't think, I don't really think I'm going to do anything with it today. I really don't. Netflix ripping. Glad I scaled out of almost all of that. Ugh, that was fun. So I'll hold some for Powell. I'm already, I mean, I've already locked in great gains on the day. So easy money, man. Easy money. Does the spy lag ES price action? Mm, no, they move pretty much the same. You can look at ES though to have an idea if like spy is actually going to break out or not because ES moves in ticks. Um, so you're not going to see it like just barely flash a high and then come back down. Like it'll, it, you'll see ES just like tap, tap, tap. It'll be the same level. And on spy, like let's say the levels like just arbitrary 420, it'll go like 42002 back down, 42005 back down. ES won't do that, so you can you can chart ES and say, "Okay, is this breakout likely or not?" Let's go golfing. Yeah. Oh, shout out to all you guys hopping into the platform today, trade1348.com. Everybody gets their first month free with code gains G A I N Z. Um, yeah, guys, make sure you're hopping in again, start off. You have all weekend to go look through and watch all of those 20 plus curriculum videos, teaching you guys how to use all those tools. 
And again, that free trial is not going to be around forever. And the lifetime price is not going to be around forever too. It's probably going to come to an end. Very Sorry, not lifetime masterclass. Um, going to come to a conclusion very soon. So make sure you're getting in before it's too late. ES for spy yesterday was disjointed a little bit. Oh, wreck it. Ralph. I didn't tell you about this one. I had an ES trade yesterday and you're going to laugh at me. Um, I don't know if it'll show me on this. Yeah. Why? Well, no. Oh, I can show you where I entered. I entered right around. No, that's not the one. No, that's 1130. I think it was here. I think I entered this. No. I don't remember where I entered, but I caught 10 points and then it ran another 30. <laughs> like, like then it ran another 30 fucking points. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> it was good though. I had a good day on futures. Netflix right back down. Sharky! I mean, that's basically just a retest of that 3-minute 200 there. All right, 10.01. Spy not really doing much here. E ES doing fuck all. Yeah, I don't really have any interest doing it today, especially with Powell. Like, because if you get a weird wick, I don't want to just get, like, randomly stopped out. I mean, the wick can go in either direction, but then it becomes gambling. So, like, if I'm basically playing and I enter a trade hoping for a wick, that's not how I trade or should be trading. Um, so there's really no point in trying to catch the move. That generous move. Well, I caught, well, I scaled out at five, took it at 10 and then was done. And then I come back later and I'm like, are you fucking serious right now? It was ridiculous, man. Spy yesterday was a unit, just an absolute weapon. Because the market went on. Boom, boom time. Oh, you guys, you guys really enjoyed my Instagram post last night, huh? Me and the, me and the little ace of spades going on. The money isn't real sign, all that stuff. You guys like that? Let's see. All right. We're slipping a little here. We broke this level. Okay, market. Yeah, but like that's kind of shitty here. Nah, I don't like that. There's too many fucking levels. Slip, slip. Oh. All right, let's see. You were in ES yesterday too. Spy pumped in ES. Was a nice steady movement. Yeah, it was nice. It was real nice. I got like, I was just sitting here listening to like James Bond music and uh, had a future trade open and it was the best afternoon ever. Just sitting here, had the music on, just like trading, making money. Again, dude, every single time I'm about to go to the gym and I'm pre-workout cracked the fuck out, money just starts falling from the sky. And it's like STV, just take it. And I'm like, oh shit and then i in the like in that like hour time frame i just start literally stealing money from the market and then i'm like well this sucks i had to delay my gym it's just delaying all my all my stuff i gotta do i mean it's good we're making money but like at the same time i'm very like schedule oriented so like if something starts fucking with my schedule i get pissed off like if i say if i think to myself i'm gonna be doing this at this time and then that doesn't end up happening i get angry is that like a mental problem? Do I have like a disease? Does anybody want to diagnose me right now? I probably do. You know, I probably got something going on. Remember, my parents had me tested as a kid. So there's, there's I got probably got something going on. And this one time my buddy was like moving. So like we had two sets of weights and he was like putting them in weird spots. And I was like, it freaked me the fuck. I was like, why are you putting them that way? Just like line them up. It's not that hard. So like maybe I have OCD or something, but also like, I'm not like, like my shit gets messy. So I don't know, man. I, 
Maybe it's like ADHD or something. Who the fuck knows? But I perform at a high level, so I don't complain. Anger management issues? No, it's not anger. Gambler? No, it's not gambling because it's me just sitting here waiting for the great setup. And right as I'm about to leave, I'm just like, ah, uh, I kind of have to take this. The strategy says take it. You diagnose me with discipline? That's fine. Two of your kids have ADHD. ADHD, I think, is a superpower. And if you just start hopping kids up on Adderall, I think that's a bad idea. I don't know if that's what you're doing, but like, I don't really need any Adderall. If I took Adderall, I've, I've done, I've taken it like twice. I just become a superhuman. My Adderall story is hilarious. Like, you guys look at like I know a lot of things. Um, and this one time in college when I took it to study or like do homework or something, I was like. My buddy, like four hours later, was like asking me to do this math problem. And the numbers were different, but it was the same way to do it. And I didn't, and it was like a complicated math problem. And I just knew the number. And I was like, this is, this is a bit weird. I couldn't trade like that though, because, and this is what I tweeted out earlier today too. Um, when I'm trading, I have to turn off the side of my thinking or brain that's like super analytical that is going to like solve the problem of the market. You can't approach the market thinking that you're going to be able to outsmart it because one, if you're doing that, your thesis is going to always be on a large, like a wildly large time frame. It's going to take a long time for it to play out. All right. Yes. Doing sort of what I would want it to do here. Nope. Okay, goodwill hunting. Bro, I don't know. It just fucking happened. I was like, all right, cool. Yes, wiki wiki. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And glad my mom never actually took me to the doctor to drug you. It can be a superpower when it's harnessed. I agree. I agree. I got tested as a kid. I think I broke a window during the test because they were trying to figure out why my brain was working the way that it was. And I'm ambidextrous, so I can throw with both my arms. When I played baseball, I could I could hit from both sides. I could also pitch from both sides too. So I would freak the I would freak people out, and they had to like create special rules. So that like I couldn't just like switch mid uh, at bat, for, like pitching. Um, I had the Uniglove. I think I still have it. It has like six finger holes, and they were like, "Yeah, he just like his." And I had a really bad stutter. I couldn't speak, and they were like, "Both sides of his brain are just firing off too quickly, and he can't talk. He's thinking it. He just can't verbalize it because it's just going too fast." Uh, do you ever buy same day options? Uh, the only day that I'm going to buy, the only time that I'm going to buy zero days is when I'm already significantly green on the day and I'm only risking a percentage of the gains that I've already made for that day. That's the only time that I do it. And it's really just for fun uh, on a good trade setup, ma mainly like a reversal or an afternoon move, either ripping back up or coming, uh, coming tanking back down. That's the only time that I will do it. Um, you guys, again, nobody needs to be trading zero days. If you are, again, that's another, that's a, you're literally just going right into the market maker and institution's hands. They move too quickly for most of you guys to be able to take advantage of. Do you get the big feels too? What is that? Adjustment disorder? What's that? I probably got that. <laughs> Netflix fucking around, coming back up. Netflix is going to be really volatile. AMD slipping here. Dude, look, it's the same exact thing as yesterday, just the opposite. Literally, look, above the 200, bounce, rip. Uh, below the 200, retest, tank. Same deal. Same deal as yesterday. No, I, that was not me. Uh, can I check Spy? Yeah, I've been watching Spy. It's not doing anything here, really.
Uh... No, Spy's just chopping, dude. Like, I don't like any of this shit. Going to watch all the new uploaded videos today instead of trading. Don't want to lose money again today. There you go. Again, watch the two videos that I posted for you guys this week. Those are absolute gems for you guys. Pay attention or pay a premium. I say that a lot, but it's true. It is true, man. All right, we're on coffee number three. Uh, record up. I wasn't like that. I was actually really like school stupid until like, let me think about when I was school stupid. I was, uh, I, I started to become math smart in seventh grade. I was in low math and then I was just like sparking those tests. Um, and then I got placed in high math and I can't do English though. Like, right. I can write, but like, not like the way that they wanted. And I was like, this is silly. Dude, I had a, I had, in eighth grade, I had a wild English teacher, dude. He like, there was this, we had specific rules. And if we violated them in any one of our papers, you had to handwrite the rules a specific number of times. One of the rules was like the you rule, where if you said the word you, you'd have to write like a page. And as the year went on, you'd have to write it. And I had like, at one point, I said it a bunch of times just because I fucking didn't realize it. And I'd write like seven pages of this, like one rule handwritten, just like writing out the rule. Would I trade spy calls or puts at what levels? I ain't doing shit with Powell coming after this day. After the day we had yesterday, I'm doing nothing, bro. Why would I touch anything before Powell after a day when the market squeezes and it's just showing us that it wants to chop around? I'm not doing anything. Sometimes days are just not built for trading. This is one of them. After Powell this afternoon, maybe. But right now, absolutely not. You guys can do what you want, um, but I don't see anything in this market that makes me want to participate right now. The only thing that I did was scale out of those Netflix puts up a nice percentage on the day. Let's fuck around and find out Friday. Most of you guys had career weeks. Just leave it, bro. What, what? There's no reason to screw around. Oh, damn. Hello. You wouldn't trade AMD puts right now? No, I told you when to trade AMD puts. I told I told you the same deal of what we were talking about yesterday. It was the retest of the 200 with risk at the 200. 107, let's say 107.15 to 105.26. That was the Netflix or the AMD trade. Uh, it was the same exact thing that I traded yesterday except the other side. So I traded the bounce off the 200 here with the three-minute traffic light coming back to the upside. Uh, you got almost the same thing here except the traffic light came in the pre-market you came down tested this level retested the 200 and then dropped like two bucks that was the trade on amd it's already down two percent the only thing that i would be looking at right now if it was normal market day and i wanted to trade is a reversal back to the upside but since today is a weird day i'm not touching anything uh now your son runs daily operations for a construction company oh that's pretty cool he's 24 oh that's awesome man That's awesome. Again, I'm up like 13, 14% this week. Why would I screw around? Like, seriously, why would I do that? You got, you got to think about markets differently, guys. Like, there are that you do not have to trade every single day, you do not have to participate every single day. Yes, uh, you took the move. Uh, I wanted it, I just didn't touch it here. Um, it's too choppy for me. And the le and you have uh resistance at four four two two five fifty, and you've got four two two six from the longer uh larger time frame. So and then down below, I mean you've got this tiny level at four two two zero point two five, and then you've got four two one six two five. Like it's tight, dude. Uh, I just, I don't, I'm not interested in touching it really today. Nailed it yesterday. Nailed it the day before. Nailed it the day before that. Like it was a good day. It was a good week on ES. And I'm like the, the 13, 14% is just on the options account. Like we have the futures account too. Oh, you guys cracked 200 likes. Thank you team. I appreciate that. Netflix hunting a traffic light back up here. 
Like, Spy could just come up to here again and have another one of these, which is not what I'm interested in. Yeah, that's a 10 a.m. candle, too. It's above on the one minute. Netflix popping. It's fine. I barely have anything in that trade now. Scaled out. Made some good money. Longer expiration so I can let those chill. All right, man. I got a lot of funny TikToks to make for you guys, too. I, make sure you guys are following me over there. TikTok, Instagram. Got a lot of funny shit coming for you guys. Tassie resistance. I mean, you're not, you don't really have much here. You cracked 180. Nothing here. I mean, 192, but that's not helpful to anybody. I mean, you could say 189. You could say this right here at 185. Yeah, right around 185.50. Oh, no. No, no, no. We got one back here. 180.68, which is kind of where we're coming up to here. Actually, let's mark that. Let's mark that on Tessie. It needs to be blue because it's from the four hour. Ding. Yeah, we got a lot of levels in here, man. I mean, the ranges are big. Like, that's 180 to 176. Like, that's a pretty big range. Hope ball is good, Tyler. You too, buddy. You too. Yes, 15 second actually works with 1348. Not for beginners, though. Yeah, like uh, the thing with futures is that you need to be able to put your risk far enough away unless you're just like plainly scalping levels. And uh, most of you guys are going to be better off just trading a couple minis. Yeah, so it's 180.68, but we've got 180.64. Let me see if I can move this up to 68. Ding, ding, ding. There. Oh, right there. Netflix kind of getting sharked at that three minute 48 again. Let's see if it can break. How do you change colors to the levels you draw? You click the line, you click the color thing, and then you can, I could make it green. I can wait. What color was that? Was that yellow? I think it was yellow. Looking for a good range to buy calls on NVIDIA. Well, there isn't one right now, especially with earnings coming next week. The ideal entry for NVIDIA was when Gabe and I bought it at 262. Um, and we nailed it for like 68%. That was the trade that uh, I think Gabe made like 250K in a day on. Um, so if we held that, which we should have, we should have left some on the table there. We, we, we were kicking ourselves about that one. Because uh, we bought it 262. It's at 3 to 12, 315. Like it's kind of ridiculous. Um, those would have been huge. Like that was the trade that I'm saying. If I combined like the Nancy and the Tesla, I would have made a lot six figures, dude. Which is it's kind of sucks, but like at the end of the day, you can't hit them all. Have a great weekend, all. Time to let's go golfing. <laughs> you fucking people, you people. All right, guys, keep smacking that like on the way in. You slackers over here. I I see you. I see you. I know what you're doing. Slacking. Also, yeah, for all you guys that still need to hop in for your uh, free trial to trade1348.com, uh, I'll throw the link in the live chat for you guys. Remember, the code is GAINS, G-A-I-N-Z. Free for a month. There you go. Come see why thousands upon thousands of people are printing every single day with us. Uh, you still don't understand that? You don't understand what, Leo? Let's go golfing. Intel's ripping. <sighs> Intel's been a piece of shit this year, I think. Hasn't it? Yeah, Intel running up there, but what has this thing done over the lot like over the year? And oh dude, this has gotten fucking booty clapped. But if it's running, 
You're late. Oh, the Let's Go Golfing? Oh, you got to watch DJ Khaled TikToks. That's what you have to do. <laughs> Intel's a hidden gem? Yeah, it could be. It could be. Yeah, that wouldn't have counted either. You have shared? Nice. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. That's a good move. I'm having a great time with my AMD shares here. Having lots of fun. All right, Powell in 39 minutes. All right, give me one second. I got to go blow my nose. I will be right back. Make sure you guys hit that like button on the way in. This is going to be like shorter than a bathroom break. Let's go golfing. All right, let's see. Dude, this is going to be stuck in my head all day. My AMD shares have been an incredible play. Yeah, 18-year-old Short the Vix was a fucking genius, huh? <laughs> Dude, I've been doing this for a while. I've been doing this for a while, man. I got Facebook. I got Dicks. Where's Dicks? Yeah, Netflix Shark. Where's Dicks? Hey, how are you down five? You, you, you fucker. You, you fucker. Hey, where are you going? That's how rude. How rude. I've been on that thing for a while. <laughs> I'm up a lot on dicks too. Uh, Jordan, it's showing you that a traffic light is coming. So like here, you see it's highlighting and the next candle traffic light. This one highlighting traffic light. It pops up enough, triggers the traffic light. Oh, Rex Costos. What up, buddy? How you doing? Let's get these gains, bro. That's what we do every day, man. Trade1348.com. There we go. Yeah, I'm up nicely today. I don't really have any interest in doing anything crazy. Let's go golfing. I would love to go golfing today. You know what I can't do? Go golfing. You have shares at 35. Oh, on Intel? Uh-oh. That's... Oof. Wait, spy forfeit. You got to be. That's got to be a typo because we're sitting at like 420 on the spy. Absolutely loving this method of trading. Never had more confidence in my plays. That's the point, guys. All you guys sitting on the sidelines, you guys get the matrix opened up to you. And then I will, I will scam the shit out of you and put more money in your trading account. Ooh. Bro, remember those days when everybody was like, you're a scam. And then I'm like, um, you do realize that we have interviews on my channel of our members of Trade1348.com turning $8,000 into over a million. So there's that. And then you guys see it on my Twitter, me printing, Gabe printing, people making 2,000% in a day. Um, 
I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Am I scamming you guys? Is that how this works? <laughs> Let's see. The method's not flawed. Nope. To be honest, I wasn't big on this whole thing, but instead of being a hater, I decided to give it a try. Right, exactly, man. I mean, that's the thing. Like, you, I sit here every single day with you guys, showing you guys, like, just literal money printing. Um, and it's up to you to take advantage of it. There's so much bullshit out there, too. So I understand why some of you guys are like, I don't know, man. Like, and, and that really stinks because there are so many people out there, and I say this a lot, who just have no idea what they're talking about in terms of anything, trading, overall market analysis, macro, things like that. Um, and it really gives a lot like uh, the this industry a little bit of a bad name, um, which is fine. I mean, we show you guys every single day. The You can, guys can go look at the Trust Pilot reviews. You guys can go uh, look at the Games Channel. You can talk to our members um, and you'll see. I mean, that's why we offer this, this one month free trial to you guys so that you can actually come in and, and understand and see what we're actually all about. Uh, Powell is in 34 minutes, but it's probably going to be a little late. Uh, we're not going to stream it. Just to, Tessie's breaking that four hour level here. Netflix just doing what Netflix does. But yeah, guys, it is what it is. I mean, again, QR code on the screen, link at the top of the live chat. I can throw that in here for you guys. Again, use code gains, G A I N Z one free month. And those of you guys that still need to upgrade to masterclass to really take it to the next level. Oh, you guys are going to see some wizard shit. Once you guys get in there. Let's go golfing. Yeah, Tesla did break. So again, what were we talking about this morning on Tesla? The three-minute traffic light was good. You needed a retest. You got it here. If this is where you were entering, you nailed it right back up. Again, I just don't have any interest in, in trading a lot of these things. I, I It's a day. I'm already really green on this week. There's really no reason for me to try and willy-nilly anything on a Friday before Powell speak. Like, what are we doing, bro? Spy very oversold on the four hour. Spy is not oversold on the four hour. What are you talking about? You're going to make me upset. You're going to make me upset. Spy overbought, chilling at 420. You can't have, you're, you're in, you're in the metaverse right now, pal. Look, I'll read back what you said. It's a typo. I think spy retest 415 would move to the next level up. Oh, are you saying are you saying it's coming down to 415? I think 418. That makes more sense. But then you said oversold. And now my brain's going to explode. I'm going to stream. I mean, maybe we stream Powell. All right. Do you guys want to stream Powell yes or no? Should we stream Powell yes or no? I I'll stream it with you guys if you want to. Yes or no? Everybody do a yes in the live chat if you want yes and do a no, but there's going to be a catch if it's yes. Yes, yes, Powell, yes. Oh, fucking, okay. 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 Fine. But here's, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. In the next 30 minutes, in order for us, for me, to stay on in stream Powell after I'm done trading for the day, walking you guys through the morning, you guys need to get the stream to 300 likes. If you do not, you have 30 minutes. Very similar to the giveaway uh, video that I had. You guys are only like 35% of the way there for me giving away a masterclass. I don't think you guys are going to hit it. If you guys get this stream to 300 likes, I'll stay on for Powell. If not, I'm going to go make TikToks and, and shorts for you guys, blast them out to you guys, um, which I will do anyway. But again, if I'm staying on here, you guys better run up that like button. Um, so we'll see. I got the stream up. I'm ready to go. It's just a matter of if you guys are ready. Blackmail. Yep. Yep. There isn't even 300 people in here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm making it hard on you. 
you're 60 away. There's more people. I mean, there's people in here that like the, the, the count isn't like the same people watching. So you can do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably stream it for like a half hour or something if you guys get there. So 300 likes and then you have 30 minutes. That's two likes a minute. Figure it out or we don't get to watch Powell. I'm like the substitute teacher. Do your assignment or you don't get to watch the movie. Okay? Spy next support. Are you talking about downside? I mean, you're going to have all these EMAs right here, the 200. You got these levels down in here as well. If you really want to see like a longer time frame retest, you've got 41840. Don't I usually have about 2K watching? Dude, I used to have like three or 5,000 watching. Well, you guys are getting there. You guys are getting there. Slackers. Uh, do I go to the, any of the Celtics games? He has seats behind the heat bench. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now, I can get courtside tickets, I think, for like a deal from like playground activities. Um, I just don't. I don't really care. I think it would be cool to do like one time. But no, not not really. So, all right. You guys are getting there. You've got, what, 47 likes to go in 29 minutes? I think you guys could do it. And we'll stay on for Powell. Again, go share the stream. Let other people in here. We'll watch Bernanke. I think Yellen is going to be talking, too. So, we'll see. Birthday in two weeks. Give the man Dude, my birthday's next weekend. My birthday is next weekend. Why do I not have the genie on here? That's weird. Wait, did this like take off all my levels too? That's fucking annoying. Yeah, that's bye. Come on now. Powell always drops the market when he speaks. That is factually incorrect. Could he do it this time? Yes. you messed up and said your birthday is next weekend be prepared for your stream to get a squeeze why my birthday is next weekend yes please daddy i ain't your pa all right let's see 97 percent like rate hey guys i don't know you slowed down on it somehow you need to get 45 more likes in order for us to stream pal so we'll see if you get it There's 40, 45 left. Like, you got 27 minutes. All right. Let's see. How did the lights go down? They didn't. They're slowly ticking up. Yeah, and remember, guys, everybody, get your free month at trade1348.com. You will not regret it. Use code GAINS, G-A-I-N-Z, and you guys are all set to go and join us in Print City. Isn't Powell in an hour and 27? Nope, it's at 11. It's at 11. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My birthday's next Saturday. Oh, thanks, Netflix. Thanks, buddy. My last free week before kids? Oh, no. Oh, no. Ship them off to, like, camp or something, dude. Like, math camp. Have their summer be productive. Have their camp be trade 1348 masterclass or something so that they learn an actual valuable skill. Will wiring in money speed up settle cash for Weeble? I think it does, but I don't know. 
get my sleep in, I don't sleep. Like, ever. Oh, Super Dad? Yeah, that's going to be rough. All right, guys, you're 38 away, and you've got 25 minutes. You're ahead of schedule, two likes a minute, to get to 300 likes for, uh, what do you call it, uh, for us to stream Powell. So figure it out, or I'm just going to kill the stream right at 11. I might be able to help you guys out a little bit with it, too. In the last 10 minutes, I'll send out a tweet. You told me about the apple pop. That's cool. I'm just not looking to trade much today. Don't be shocked Saturday when Super Chats come back to back. I'm not going to stream on my birthday, bro. It's a Saturday. When Powell speak, 11. Okay. I don't really want anything here, bro. Like, I do, but I also don't, you know? Because then Powell's going to start speaking. Spy knife? Yeah, a little bit there. Netflix selling a little, nothing crazy. Wires two days on Weeble. Oh, cool. Drunk trading. No, you guys saw me on my birthday last year. We got hammered in the afternoon, but we were done trading. All right, guys, you're 34 likes away. You're losing it. How old am I turning? Uh, 24. I'll be 24. Check me into the home. Let's go golfing. All right, sorry. <laughs> Ooh, knife candle. Knife candle. That's a big boy knife candle. Ooh, look at that. I mean, yeah, this is why I don't want to trade much today. It's chop, chop, chop. Hit the light. You're 31 away. You guys might be able to do it. I don't know, though. I don't know. In order for us to stay on Extreme Pal. Let's see. Is anybody speaking before Powell to make this knife? Well, I can take a look. No, nobody's speaking right now. They're probably just playing music. Yep. But I love her! Ooh. I like, I like. Kind of just want to watch it play out today. Oh, there you go, guys. You started ramping it up a little bit. 25 away now. I'm just watching this play out. And then where would this be? be? Here. Okay. Hit the like button, you freeloaders. Hey, man, I know there's still some freeloaders lurking around in here. If you want to see Powell, you know what you have to do. It's just click. It was a bear trap? Uh, no. It's more so just chop before Powell. People just kind of getting in and out Uh, after like yesterday. They're not trapping anything here. It's everybody knows Powell's about to speak. Bernanke's coming on. Like, I think people are just last minute positioning, which is why I don't want to participate.
All right, let's see. <laughs> you guys are getting there. You guys are close. You're you're 21 away. You're so close, team. You have 20 minutes. Are you going to be able to do Yeah, there it is. Nice little retest. If this gets dirty down, that could get interesting. It looks like it wants to. It it, it does look like it wants to make this move down here, but let's see. It, it, again, it, it's kind of a wild card with Powell coming on in 20 minutes. 25% on a Zoom call. There you go. Uh, I agree with you. Always learning, always saving. Yeah, but like a retest of 418. That's kind of what I'm looking for overall uh, to take any long positions. But ideally, I'd love to see this thing fly to 430 and then we can short it back down. Let's go, Putt Shack. And... Putt Shack's fun, dude. Let's see. It's giving you better support and resistance levels. So it's it has different settings in it. Here it comes. Here it comes. Is, would this have hit the... Nah, you still got a ways to go. It's, it's tapping that low of that wick on ES. On Spy, it's not, but on ES it is. If it breaks this, you could scream very quickly down to one of these day lows here. Nineteen, eighteen people away. Oh, you guys are close. I tweeted it out. I'm trying to help you guys. Netflix breaking. Oh, you're 13 away now. You can do it. You can do it. Netflix hunting day lows here. That's good. Spy, that might have done it. Nah, it'd still be like two points away. So you broke you broke this recent low on that flash candle down, but you haven't like you haven't had a nice little confident move down through it. Yeah, I think you guys got the 300. I think you guys got that, no problem. You got 15 minutes. And you're 12 away. I think you guys got that, no problem. Is this the greatest channel of all time? Yup. Yup. God, Netflix, just fucking break it, dude. I mean, I'm all basically all out of it, but like this trade could still go a little nutty. I mean, these are up what, 15, 16% here? It's the final countdown. Da -da 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 all right, let's see. Up 14.2% on the port for the day and walking away. Thank you, 1348. There you go, bro. Again, everybody, the QR code is on the screen for your one-month free trial. I'll throw that link in the live chat for you guys, too, while you're eight likes away from us being able to stream Powell and you have 15 minutes. I think you got it. I think you got it. <laughs> Did Masterclass end yet? I don't know. 
I don't know. Same. Oh, ho, 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 ho. what's masterclass? That's where we take things to a whole nother level with you guys with trading. A whole nother level, man. It is just the absolute best tools. You get to watch Gabe Street uh, trade live every single day. Now, granted, it's on a delay so that you guys are not follow trading. If I catch any of you guys doing that, I will kick you the fuck out. You get my midweek masterclasses. You get the thigh gap indicator. You get all the new charts. Um, you get the, the Sunday masterclasses where Gabe and I come together. It is the next step if you want to completely turbocharge your trading. Um, the price that it's currently at right now is not going to stay the same for very long. Um, make sure you guys are hopping in there if you're interested because there will be a price increase coming. Oh, five more for us to be able to stream Powell. Ah, ah you got 14 minutes. I think you could do it. How much is it now? Uh, 1348 for the year. It is 1348 for the year. Let's see if this trade would hit. Need some follow through. I don't know. I'm just watching stuff. All right, let's see. Oh, we're two. I see us being two away. Yeah, we put a lot of time in with you guys in Masterclass, and you guys are seeing the, the benefits of that. It is awesome. But yeah, everybody gets their first month free, though, to the normal monthly membership and platform. You guys see 301? I still see 298. Yeah, that trade would have hit. Cool. I think. Ooh, no, it wouldn't have actually yet. And no. That was like a 13 rim type of deal there. Wow. That was a tick. I don't have it. I'm just watching it play out. Uh, it was basically a 13 EMA rim on the three minute here. Wow, they fucking ticked it so far. Yeah, it came down to 421750. And 421725 would have been the the uh the buy limit. Oh, you guys hit it. All right. <clears throat> we can we can stream power. There you guys go. We're gonna stream power for a little bit. Listen to what they have to say, <clears throat> and then I'll fuck off and leave you guys alone. There you guys go. Now I see 305. Fuck yeah, team. There we go. Master right now is 1348. That's what the price is. But it will be going up. Again, the amount of value that we provide you guys in there is unseen anywhere else. So again, all right. That it needs one more tick down for that thing to be confirmed that it would have definitely filled. I mean, it might have if it's hitting it like that. It just needs a dink and then it would have filled. Just risky business playing ahead of Powell. That's why I didn't take it. Yeah, they, they so they hit the level there. But they haven't blasted it through, so I don't think a buy limit would have filled. See? See that shit? You see that shit? This is why I'm not trading today. You want to know what the take profit was? 421725. You know what level it just fucking ripped off of? 421725. I am not interested in fucking around here. No, thank you. Let's 
interest, eh? Not interested. Oh, Netflix. I would have been so pissed if it just did that. So pissed. If I was in that trade, I would have been so angry. <laughs> if I was in that trade, I literally probably would have not streamed Powell, even if you fucking, like, even though you hit the like button. Dude, that was to the, like, that hit it. That's why I'm not trading today, guys. There Again, I'm trying to show you guys some of these things so that you understand. These are not the type of environments that you want to be fucking around with it. Look at this thing fly around. No, 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 no. Get it out of here. Fucking Netflix being a fucker. Jerome Candles? Yeah, that was Jerome fuck your puts Powell. Coming in hot. Yeah, so I'll probably after this, I'll get lunch. I think I'm going to go to this bagel place today. I think that's what we'll do. All right, let's see. That is exactly why I had no interest in trading today. It comes right down to this fucking level and then bink. None of <clears throat> none of that. The only thing that I've done today is scale out of Netflix. That is it. Up nicely on the port. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. What do I got? Allergies or something? Maybe. I don't know. Nancy slip in. Netflix being a little shithead here. Uh, did monthly subscribers get the stoplights removed? Nope. What you need to do is connect your TradingView account to a uh, platform, but we've made many announcements about that. So scroll back up in the announcements on how to do that. Uh, didn't AMD have bad earnings and tank before the pump? Their earnings really weren't that bad. Their earnings were not that bad. I bought, oh, fuck, dude. I bought AMD calls the day after their, the day of their earnings too. Like, af like, like after it, the reaction happened when it knifed, I was in on calls the next day and drilled it. I, I made some like TikToks about that too. That was like another, uh, another, I think it was another couple thousand I ripped off AMD there. That was good. In French, Jerome can be a girl name. What are the French doing? Like I could see like, Spencer maybe or like like some other names that are like typically guys names but like Jerome bro if some girl walks up to me and goes hi my name's Jerome I'm gonna be like yeah I don't think so actually I think you're lying to me right now and like lie like don't be a liar up 42 percent on the day there you go trade 1348 1348.com for the win I show you guys this every single day, and those of you guys aren't in there with us yet. For the at least, like, dude, it's free for a month. You're being left behind. Bro, like, imagine that though. Like, some girl walks up to you and she's like, "Hey, my name's Jerome." I'd be like, "No, it's fucking not." <laughs> like, or your parents are just strange. You see, my name is Jerome. I don't think so, bro. I'd be like, I, there'd be so many things. I'd be like, all right, one, cool accent. Two, why'd you just say Jerome like that? Three, why is your name Jerome? I don't think, I just don't. I think if you can point out one person to me that's a woman that is named Jerome, cool. But I don't think you can. I've never experienced this. Most people in like in Europe have like normal names. Like I know a lot of people from over there. They all have normal. Well, no, well eh, hmm, some of them have not normal names. One actually, one of them has a not normal name that I know. And I was like, that's interesting. But it still sounds like a dude's name. 
You guys going to cancel me for being sexist? Is that how we're going to do things? That I think that gir uh, girls shouldn't be named Jerome? Or I think if somebody says like, oh, the, my name's Jerome, you guys are going to cancel me? Is that how it's going to go? Is that why you're saying this? You're like, let's, let's fucking cancel the kid. Fuck him. We're going to get him to say that girls shouldn't be named Jerome, especially if they're French. Is that what we're doing here? It's a Friday. Was the best and worst thing Powell can say? That's not really relevant because he's not going to say either of those things. <laughs> Sorry. Best thing, we're cutting rates to zero. Markets are going to go crazy. Return of the money printer back on. Markets rip. Worst thing you could say is we're raising rates 100, base, like 100 basis points right now. Like not Neither of those things are going to happen. All right. Six minutes to go until Powell... When does Paul talk? Uh, Paul talks in four minutes. You knew Jerome back then and he was a crook. Right, but you're kind of feeding into my point that like Jerome's aren't women. <laughs> like, like that's just proving my point. You're like, yeah, I knew this dude named Jerome. And I'm like, exactly. <laughs> you knew a dude. He can be the best dude in the world or an absolute shithead. Still a guy, not a woman. Paul. All right, are they doing anything here? Nah, not yet. I got to move some shit around. I got ketchup on my desk, which I probably shouldn't, but, you know, is what it is, pal. I got to clean my desk. You guys making me stay on longer today, too? It's fine. Fine. Keep smacking that like on the way in, though, team. We should start calling him Paul. We do call him Paul. Pow. All right, let's see. Paul. <laughs> and, and you know who else we have? Janet Yellen is speaking today as well, I believe. And she's going to talk about how potentially inflation is transitory and how the debt ceiling needs to be raised because that's the most obvious outcome. And the United States is going to have to do it. And even though we're dangling the fate of the working class and poor people to just bargain for nonsense bills possibly to just send more billions to ukraine for no fucking reason at all that they're just gonna keep bargaining and that's how it's gonna go until they make a deal and then they're all gonna act like heroes because you know the they created the problem but then they're the ones that are gonna solve it and save us from absolute turmoil and depression so yeah that's <laughs> Um, sorry, I didn't. My alter ego, Janet Yellen, came out there, so I, I didn't mean to do that, but it is what it is, man. Is he yelling a Muppet? I don't know. Hold on, let me adjust the camera real quick. All right. Magic Ray Cuts, Spark TLT. Do I have a Mitch McConnell? No, I don't. I'd have to listen to Mitch McConnell more to hear him. I got this. I got this one, though. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Orange Capital. The inflation numbers. Bro, she needs to go to the home. Like, really. Send Janet to the, to the home. She has no business talking about monetary policy or fiscal policy at all. You know why? Because she said inflation was transitory. You know what it wasn't? Transitory. <laughs> like, stopped in profit before Jay Powell. There you go. Kermit the Frog. I don't know what Kermit's is, but I can do this one too. Oh, boy. Little Mickey Mouse. Jay Powell, good morning. He's not, he's not going to have a prepared statement. He might say good morning, but he's not going to say like, he's, he's not going to be like, he doesn't have like a, this isn't a Fed meeting. It's just a con, like a, like an event, a conference where they're just going to be talking about monetary policy. He honestly, the, one of the reasons why I'm like, all right, we'll stream Powell is because, or Paul, whatever the fuck you want to call him, um, is because like, he's not going to, I don't think he's going to say very much. Like, he might speak for two minutes, and then they're just going to go to Bernanke, Yellen, and all these other people and just ask them all these questions. 
So after Powell speaks, if we don't see him speak for like the next five minutes, I'm killing it. Like, because then that's it. I don't really care what Ben Bernanke has to say. I don't. He was, wasn't he a uh, Fed chair in 08? Or was it, who was it? It was Bernanke, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Bernanke. It started. All right, cool. Very warm, kind, friendly, helpful person. And he was just a joy to work with. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to be here to, you know, say to say this about him. Thank you. Jay. Thank you, Trevor. Um, so first of all, let me say this, this Congress is a very fitting tribute to Tomas, and I'm really delighted and honored to be part of it. And let me add uh, my thanks to those of us who made all this happen here today. So I, I first met Tomas uh, when I joined the board as a governor uh, in May 2012, almost exactly 11 years ago. And in preparing to join the board and then in the early years at the board, I, I was very focused on developing you know, a deeper background in macroeconomics and monetary policy. Many people here at the board supported me in that process, too many to name here, but I will say Tomas really stood out. And it was during the process of reading you know, the literature and discussing it that I really started to get to know him. He had this great ability to communicate complicated ideas. He obviously loved talking about economics and he, his great enthusiasm and willingness to engage with me. A, you know, a new governor was uh, immediately evident. He was very gracious to me and we had a lot of informant, uh, informative discussions. So rather than being his teacher, I was really his student in those early years. Um, as you know, by the time, uh, as you noted, uh, Trevor, by the time I became chair in 2018, Tomas was uh, the head of the Division of Monetary Affairs. And in that role, he was a trusted advisor to me and to the FOMC. Um, his leadership was particularly important as the FOMC conducted our first ever public monetary policy review. He played a major role in organizing that, identifying key topics and organizing the staff all through the Federal Reserve System. He also played an absolutely essential role during uh, the critical uh, period of the pandemic at the very beginning when we were marshalling our forces and our tools to stabilize the financial system and protect the economy from even more dire consequences. And through it all, he, he did come through as, not just for his dedication, his great intellect and his, his uh, mastery of monetary economics, but also just for his kindness as a human being and, and just as in being a terrific, great colleague and a great person. Thank you. I think there's a lot of agreement for the sentiments that both of you have expressed. Appreciate that. Um, before we get to some questions on some current issues, uh, I did want to ask you both about any formative experiences that you may have had that have shaped your views, uh, particularly about your thinking about monetary policy. Um, Paul Vol Volcker, in his oral history interview, uh, tells the story of his mother, who was adamant that he received the same dollar value monthly allowance when he was in college that his older sisters did 10 years prior. And of course, he was not too happy about that because inflation in the interim obviously uh, eroded the real purchasing power of that allowance. Um, so as the story goes, that uh, was the beginning of his uh, personal commitment uh, to price stability. <laughs> so Jay, do you have any such uh, stories to tell? Maybe, maybe not quite that on point, but um, <laughs> so I graduated from college in 1975 during what we now call the Great Inflation and the same, same college year as Ben. And I started working as a lawyer in the financial sector in the late 1970s. I recall from that time a growing sense that high inflation was essentially a permanent part of the landscape, just something that we all had to accept and deal with and that the costs of getting rid of it were too high. So you just were getting used to it. Um, of course, ultimately the Fed did step up and restore price stability. And uh, 
one lesson from that era is that price stability is really the foundation of a strong economy and that the economy doesn't work for anyone without price stability. Another is that high inflation is, is when we have high inflation, it is the responsibility and the obligation of the central bank to restore and sustain price stability. So today, while inflation isn't as high as it was uh, when I was in college, it's nonetheless far above our 2% objective. And many people are currently experiencing high inflation for the first time in their lives. Uh, it's not a headline to say that they really don't like it. Uh, you know, so we are um, very aware that high inflation uh, imposes significant hardship as it, uh, as it reduces purchasing power, especially for those who are at the margins of the economy and uh, living paycheck to peck paycheck and need to pay, use all of their incoming income to pay for food, housing, and transportation and other, uh, other essentials. And that's why the committee is so strongly uh, committed to return, returning to our 2% goal. We think that failure to get inflation down would, would not only prolong the pain, but also increase ultimately the social costs of getting back to price stability, causing even greater harm to families and businesses and we aim to avoid that by remaining steadfast in pursuit of our goals. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I had mentors, uh, Dale Jorgensen at Harvard and Stanley Fisher at MIT in particular, but I'm gonna tell you about something that happened to me when I was six years old. Um, I used to visit my grandparents in Charlotte, North Carolina during the summer, and I would sit on the front porch of their house and listen to my grandmother tell stories about her life. And she told about how uh, she raised her family in Connecticut in the 1930s during the Great Depression. And it was a town that was specializing in shoe manufacture. And uh, during the Depression, a lot of the factories were shut down. And she told me that, uh, you know, it was a very hard time. A lot of the kids went to school in tattered shoes or, or maybe no shoes at all. And I said, Grandma, why, why would they do that? And she said, well, because their fathers lost their jobs. Why did they lose their jobs? Because the shoe factory shut down. Now, I was only six years old, but I could see the problem with that argument. I said, well, why didn't they just open the shoe factories and make shoes for the children? And she said, it doesn't, doesn't work that way. But I, I think it really was a puzzle to me that you had the same productive capacity in 1933 that you had in 1928. And in 1928, people were dancing to Charleston. In 1933, they were in bread lines. And that impressed on me, you know, that, that economics can make really big difference in people's lives. And monetary policy is like that. I mean, it's as uh, Jay, of course, and all of you well know that the decisions made in this building have a very broad and, and, and real effect on people's lives. And uh, for that reason, besides its intellectual fascination, it's, it's worth studying and understanding. Thank you. I know that's certainly a key motivation for many people in this room <laughs> to be working so hard. Um, okay, let's now turn to some uh, topics of, of more current interest. Um, and I'd like to start with uh, the nexus between the financial system and the macro economy. Um, both of you, uh, during your ten years as chair, have faced very significant historic uh, financial crises. Um, ben, obviously, you confronted the global financial crisis, and Jay, the, the global pandemic. Those episodes were clearly uh, acute, uh, very vivid examples of the connections between the macro economy and the financial system, um, as well as a, I think a good illustration of the role of central banks in such episodes. Um, but Ben, your research importantly, and the research that you have inspired has really demonstrated that understanding the connections between the financial sector, credit markets uh, and banks and the real economy is critical for even understanding traditional business cycles. Um, so with that as background, we have just experienced uh, a period of stress in certain parts of the banking system here in the United States. So I want to get your take on uh, those developments, how you think uh, they, they match up compared to some previous episodes and, and what they might mean for the economy. Well, in some dimension, the recent crisis has followed as the standard sequence. Um, I don't know anything about Silicon Valley Bank other than what I read in the paper, so please don't uh, misinterpret this. But it was a, a classic situation where uh, they had um, assets that were subject to risk. In particular, as interest rates rose, the value of their long-term assets fell and their capital fell. Uh, they had hoped to hedge that by uh, their deposit uh, franchise, where uh, as interest rates rose and interest rates moved more slowly on deposits, that would partially compensate, but 
they were dealing uh, with customers who were very uh, media, uh, social media savvy, and, and that didn't really work. So after the decline in capital, you had the second stage, which is runs, people taking out their money, um, which ultimately led uh, to uh, the collapse of the bank. Despite, I may add, the uh, good efforts of the Fed and the FDIC to provide liquidity and provide support uh, for depositors. The third stage uh, of the banking crisis is contagion. And people looked at other banks and said, oh, they look sort of vaguely like Silicon Valley Bank. They got the same number of letters in their name and all kinds of things like that. And, and that caused for that caused people to begin to remove you know, deposits uh, elsewhere. Um, and, and finally, the, 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 the reason this is important um, uh, is that it ultimately affects uh, credit conditions. And uh, the Federal Reserve is, of course, uh, looking at the effects of, of uh, bank problems and, and other financial issues on the extension of credit and, and therefore on, on, on the real uh, economy. Um, so, you know, in that respect, I think it's uh, very similar to uh, other crises. I think it's different from the global financial crisis in many ways including its scale and scope, of course, but uh, I would mention uh, a couple of things, a couple of important differences. One is that the impaired asset in this case was U.S. Treasuries, uh, which are very different <clears throat> assets in kind from subprime mortgages in that U.S. Treasuries can always be valued accurately, and so there's not the uncertainty that was associated with uh, subprime mortgages. And secondly, as the economy declines, uh, if it does decline, uh, U.S. Treasuries actually become more valuable rather than less valuable, and so there's, there's this kind of a countercyclical effect. So that's that's one very important difference, I think. And then the other uh, worth mentioning, and but very important, is that relative to say the GFC or the Great Depression, overall borrowers are in much better shape, you know, than they were uh, in these previous episodes. And that makes a big difference, both in terms of the stability of the banks and also in terms of the impact on consumer spending and the economy in general. Well, I guess a major reason that situation didn't get worse, and I think the contagion was very much contained, were the forceful actions, Jay, that, that you and the Federal Reserve took uh, through through the use of your liquidity tools, including uh, the creation of the bank term funding program. Um, however, in deploying these liquidity tools, uh, you know, that is common, you know, against this backdrop where the uh, preeminent monetary policy concern is high inflation. And that's, of course, a little different from some of the earlier episodes and has raised uh, renewed discussions about uh, the so-called um, separation principle, right? And so I wanted to ask you how you think about uh, the use of financial stability tools and liquidity tools, as opposed to more traditional monetary policy tools uh, and how they fit together. It's an interesting question, though, but I, I wanna start by saying though that the overall, uh, the banks and the banking system are strong and resilient and well positioned to deal with the challenges they may face now or in the future. So uh, as you pointed out, we do have separate tools, monetary policy to achieve our macroeconomic objectives, liquidity, supervisory, and regulatory tools to address financial stability issues. But I see an important distinction between the separation, this is the separation principle, separation and independence. Our tools can have separate objectives, but their effects are often not entirely independent. So. The tools are complementary almost all of the time because financial and macroeconomic stability are so deeply intertwined. In fact, our consensus statement uh, notes that sustainably achieving maximum employment and price stability depends on a stable financial system. So because they're so intertwined, to me, there is not likely to be an absolute and complete separation of the tools, nor is that possible or desirable. And I, I think as Ben's research, research and the global financial crisis demonstrated, Financial stability affects macroeconomic stability and vice versa. We saw that clearly at the outset of the pandemic. As a result, the tools that we use to address concerns in either arena can and will affect both, especially during extreme circumstances. That said, yes, the tools are separate. They have individual purposes and most of the time each can be used for its intended purpose without comprising, compromising the other. For example, uh, as you pointed out, when banking stresses emerged in early March, we used our liquidity tools, discount window in the bank term funding program to make liquidity available to banks that might need it. And that liquidity supported the stability of the financial system without restricting the use of our monetary policy tools to promote price stability. While the financial stability tools helped to calm conditions in the banking sector, developments there 
on the other hand, are contributing to tighter credit conditions and are likely to weigh on economic growth, hiring and inflation. So as a result, our policy rate may not need to rise as much as it would have otherwise to achieve our goals. Of course, the extent of that is, is highly uncertain. So. Thank you. Um, and of course that, I think the effectiveness of those tools is reflected in, uh, in the fact that the FOMC um, has actually raised interest rates twice since the emergence of the banking strains. Uh, of course, and that, the purpose of that is to uh, uh, confront the inflation issue, um, which brings us to our next topic, which is in fact inflation. Um, you know, in the pandemic and the aftermath, uh, we've had many renewed discussions of the important and classic uh, textbook distinction between supply shocks and demand shocks. Um, and in particular, the particular challenges that a supply shock uh, can present to, to a central bank. Um, and that's also raised a lot of questions in, in academia and in policy circles as to whether or not the inflation process uh, post pandemic is going to look quite different than prior. Um, Jay, maybe we can start with you. Um, a number of folks have uh, argued that we are entering a new period where supply shocks will be more frequent. Um, we'd love to hear your views on your, uh, whether you think that's a possibility and what that might mean for central banks. So it's, it's a great question and it's one I think we'll be dealing with for, for quite a long time. And I'd say it's certainly possible that we'll see continued supply shocks. I also think it's just very hard to forecast that with any confidence. As Yogi Berra is thought to have said, Ben, you're the baseball expert. You can, you can confirm or deny this, but um, it is difficult to make predictions, especially about the future. Um, so I think that the best we can do at this stage is probably to just identify the factors that we think can lead to further uh, negative supply shocks. I will say that though that positive supply shocks rel related to globalization largely probably contributed significantly to the period of low inflation that either ended or was interrupted by the onset of the pandemic. And I'm thinking there of the, the vast increase in global labor supply, the development of efficient global supply chains, you know, facilitated by technological advances and things like that. And I would say those positive supply shocks do not seem likely to be repeated. Um, at the same time, the drivers of the current inflationary surge certainly included a sequence of large negative supply shocks to the global supply chain for goods, which also experienced a large and persistent shift in demand from services as good to goods and also the supply of workers. On top of that, Russia's war against Ukraine brought shock, further shocks to global supply chains, particularly supplies of energy and non-energy commodities. So we can't know how persistent those shocks will be or whether further negative supply shocks will come along. Will, the global, will globalization be partially or, or fully halted or reversed? Will it resume again as the pandemic mercifully recedes into memory? We, we can't really know that now. Um, but for policymakers, uh, the bottom line is that central banks will continue to be responsible for providing, uh, providing price stability, and that will require us to navigate, navigate whatever additional supply shocks do occur. So as Tomas and Ben and their co-authors wrote in the inflation targeting book, what a central bank can do is control inflation. And that is true over time, even in the presence of supply shocks, should they come. Ben, I'd love to hear your views on this. So unusual events uh, which disrupt normal economic functioning often are followed by inflation. Examples are World War I, World War II, the Korean War, and now the pandemic. And the pandemic just makes it harder for policymakers to understand what's happening and to react appropriately. In, in particular, the pandemic uh, scrambled the labor market, made it harder to judge the state of the labor market. It, the opening led to a very extended rise in commodity prices, which was difficult to deal with. We had supply chain issues, which was a pretty much a new thing, which was also a contributor to inflation. So there, there are many features of the pandemic that made this an unusual episode and a difficult uh, episode to address. Um, that being said, I, I think that, and I've done some research on this, this with Olivier Blanchard that we're presenting next week, um, the, the basic mechanisms, I think, are still the same. If you, but you have a bunch of bad shocks, that's going to give you a problem, but uh, the underlying mechanisms of supply shocks and tight labor markets and so on are, are really the same. So I think, you know, I don't think it's been a, a major change in the underlying process that generates inflation, only a, a series of shocks related to the pandemic that, that gave us this, uh, this episode going forward. I, I agree with Jay that we, we can't predict um, 
you know, what new shocks will come. We've got uh, new technologies out there that might, you know, make big changes in our economy. Um, we've got, uh, you know, green investment, things like that, that might affect the price and availability of uh, fossil fuels. And, and so there are many, many things that we can't, can't predict. But I, I think that broadly speaking, that uh, the inflation process has not changed. And it's one aspect of that, which is very good news, is that the Federal Reserve's credibility <clears throat> has helped keep inflation expectations, particularly longer term inflation expectations, reasonably well anchored, which is always sort of the first step in getting control of inflation. <clears throat> You mentioned the uh, role of the labor market tightness in the inflation process. Um, I think it's quite striking that prior, right on the eve of the pandemic, the unemployment rate was around three and a half percent, a you know five decade low. Uh, and yet at the same time, inflation was kind of struggling to get up to two percent on a sustained basis. Here we are uh, in 2023. The unemployment rate is roughly at the same level as it was prior to the pandemic, but of course, inflation is far above two uh, percent. Um, so in that context, um, should we be thinking about the relationship between slack in the labor market and inflation differently? Do we not have the right measures of slack? Is it the problems with understanding what the natural rate of unemployment is? Uh, or is that really, or is slack really not the key to understanding inflation in the first place? Okay, you want to take that well, one first? As I was uh, talking about before, I think that the uh, pandemic, to some extent, scrambled the usual signals to the labor market. And the Federal Reserve, over time, has begun to put more weight on things like the vacancy to unemployment ratio, which seems to give a better signal in a period of change when um, uh, the labor market matching process is, is in change uh, than the unemployment rate. So uh, there has been some scrambling of those signals. Um, that being said, it's a simply not true that, you know, even in people who understood since the 70s that there's not a simple inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. Um, in particular, uh, what can break that relationship is supply shocks. And so during the 70s, we didn't particularly have tight labor markets most of the time. We had high inflation, A, because we had oil price shocks which the Fed did not respond to adequately, B, because inflation expectations were not well anchored, and there was a strong tendency for uh, price increases to feed into wage increases to feed into price increases. So because of the presence of supply shocks and inflation expectations dynamics, there's no reason why you know, low unemployment and high inflation can't coexist, uh, but uh, the, the remedies might be, you know, depending on the situation, might be somewhat okay. different. I'm just having fun, bro. Okay. How are you thinking about that? So I'm very much in agreement with that. You know, it, it's certainly true that we had uh, both before and after the pandemic inflation very, uh, sorry, unemployment very low, close to three and a half percent, but that we only had high inflation after the pandemic. Does that mean that our understanding of the relationship between slack and inflation is badly wrong or that it has changed fundamentally after the pandemic? And my answer would be tentatively no to both of those questions. I think what, what really is different this time was the series of unexpected and persistent supply shocks that featured in the inflation process. I don't think labor market slack was a particularly important feature of uh, inflation when it first spiked in uh, spring of 2021. By contrast, I do think that labor market slack is likely to be an increasingly important factor in inflation going forward, in particular inflation in non-housing services is showing signs of real persistent. In this highly diverse uh, sector, labor costs are a high proportion of, of total costs, and, and, and that sector happens to account for more than half of, of, uh, of the core PCE index. Um, but all, all of this, the point is, all of this can be explained, I think, using our standard framework for understanding labor market slack. You could say it uh, this way, that the natural rate of employment probably rose sharply as the pandemic severely disrupted the labor market. And the implication of that would be that an unemployment rate of, say, 4% uh, indicated a much tighter labor market in 2021 than it did in 2018. Um, and as Ben mentioned, of course, after the pandemic, we began looking at much more closely at alternative measures, particularly vacancies, but also quits, which have been signaling even greater tightness than the unemployment rate alone might have been, might have thought to have been to signal. I mean, to, to, to put some numbers on it, 
Um, we at the end of 2018 and the end of 2021, we had 4% roughly unemployment in both cases. In 2018, the vacancies to unemployment ratio was one to one, essentially. In 2021, it was two to one. And that was a much better indicator, obviously, at that time of the simple standalone unemployment rate. Although, as I mentioned, you could also think of it as the, the natural rate being highly elevated. The, the other thing is, uh, you know, the, um, it, it may also be the case that the Phillips curve has steep, steepened, meaning that inflation has returned, at least for now, to being more responsive to changes in the labor market, in labor market slack. But, you know, the Phillips curve, um, was once thought to be fairly steep uh, at the flattening. Relationships in the economy, like the Phillips curve, evolve over time. So I would not characterize that as a problem for our understanding of inflation. Very good, thank you. Um, maybe we can pivot here to the topic of central bank communications. Um, it's widely understood now that the better the public understands uh, the conduct of monetary policy, the more effective it will be. Um, but fostering that type of understanding really requires a lot of uh, communications. And of course, that can be hard. Um, both of you have been powerful advocates for advancing monetary policy communications, both with an eye toward making policy more effective, uh, but also for the purposes of promoting transparency and accountability. Um, Dan, you've obviously played a critical role here, advancing the FOMC's communications including the introduction of uh, ah. press conferences after FOMC meetings, okay. uh, the introduction of the summary of economic projections. Um, so what changes over this period uh, since the communication say revolution began, would you highlight as being some of the most effective, most important, and where do some remaining challenges exist? Well, let me talk about communication because I think you need to understand that it serves multiple purposes. <clears throat> I mean, what, one of its purposes, the narrow purpose, is to try to align market expectations with the Fed's own thinking. Um, I think that goes back to Alan Greenspan. You go back to 1994, the first FOMC statement. I mean, since then, uh, you know, the Fed has tried at least to give some indication uh, of what it's thinking and what it sees as the risks to the economy. But beyond that, uh, you mentioned transparency and accountability. This is a powerful institution. Uh, it's very important that it be accountable to the Congress and to the public. And the best way to do that is explain what we think, what we're doing, you know, and how and, and how we're going to go about that. Um, there's other reasons for uh, communication. One I would talk about is uh, feedback. Uh, we're having a conference here. Um, if the Fed puts out the issues that it's concerned about. Um, Economists will, will write articles or, or tweet <laughs> and uh, respond to that. Um, or in the case of uh, the Fed Listens program, maybe it would be more ordinary people who are explaining you know, how, how monetary policy affects them. Uh, one final thing I would mention is, uh, is diversity of views. Because the Fed has a consensus culture, and there are very few dissents normally, uh, the outside perception is the Fed is, is subject to groupthink, which of course is possible, but with people talking about, you know, their own views and explaining why they, you know, why they see the economy as, as, as they do, it, it does, I think, at least to some extent, show that there is a range of opinion uh, on the, on the <clears throat> committee. Uh, in terms of, of uh, tools, I, I guess I do feel proud about the press conferences, which I introduced four times a year after the, um, summary of economic projections in which Chair Powell has taken to a, an art form. Um, <laughs> and uh, the, uh, I think also, you know, just the, uh, the inflation target, the, uh, the, the forecasts that we release, and th there's a cultural change, which some people don't like, but I think on net is, is good, which is, it used to be, uh, if you look back at speeches in the Greenspan era, the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis you know, would talk about, you know, harvests or something, wouldn't talk very much about the global or national economy. Now you have a lot of people talking <clears throat> about, you know, the different aspects of the Federal Reserve's views. And uh, again, that contributes uh, to both uh, market transparency and also to accountability to the local constituency and to the national constituency. Yeah, you, of course, have continued to push forward on the communications and transparency fronts. Welcome your thoughts. You know, I think the broader setting is that um, transparency is especially important today. Um, polling data show 
that many important uh, public and private institutions globally have struggled to retain the public's trust and support in recent years. Now we're an institution that serves a critical public mission, but to, to be here and work here is to know that the particulars of what we do and how we do it are not generally top of mind for, for most people. Um, and on top of that, we have a critical and a rare grant of independence. And all of that to me means that we have a special obligation to explain ourselves clearly what we do, why we do it, to provide transparency to the public and their elected representatives in Congress so that we can earn and deserve their trust and support. And that's, that's a critical task if we are gonna sustain our democratic legitimacy through this, this uh, interesting period. My colleagues and I really take that as a primary and affirmative proactive obligation and not something we see as a burden or of sector second order importance. So in that spirit, uh, to your point, we have followed the example of Chairman Greenspan beginning in 1994 with the first post meeting statement through Ben's you know, uh, innovations and Janet as well in looking to foster greater transparency and accountability. And a couple of Look, examples, we this, know do a press conference after every meeting, not just every other one. We have greatly expanded Good our day. congressional outreach to be certain that we hear directly from lawmakers on an ongoing basis uh, so that they and also so that they have the information that they need to conduct appropriate oversight. As I mentioned, in, in 2019 and 20, we conducted a public review of our monetary policy framework, seeking input from a broad range of people and groups all around the country. We've also significantly expanded transparency beyond monetary policy. For example, we now publish semi-annual financial stability and supervision and regulation reports. Of course, there are always uh, communication challenges, uh, especially I find about communicating the uncertainty that attends our assessments of economic conditions and the outlook. Um, and a good, a good example of this is despite our persistent efforts to explain otherwise, the policy policy paths That's from the good. SEP seem regularly to be taken as a firm plan or a committee decision rather than what they are, which is a compilation of indi individual participants' best assessments on a particular day of appropriate policy under the assumption that conditions evolve in line with their base baseline forecast. Right. So that all right, guys, we're not really getting much out of this market's selling off. There's nothing really new coming out of this. The market's just taking this opportunity to just go really into knife land. So again, for all of you guys that are sitting on the outside right here, remember every single one of you guys gets your first month absolutely free on us to trade1348.com with code GAINS, G-A-I-N-Z. So again, make sure that you guys are hopping in for that. I mean, we're not seeing much with Powell. We've got this 418.31 level. What I was looking at <coughs> was the weekly candle. If the weekly candle wicks above the high, I mean, that's not going to be a really, really clear sign that this thing wants to continue higher. If we do end up closing above this 418.31, I could say we could easily see some more upside. So wait towards the end of the day. Um, but right now, market's just selling off. This is exactly why I was saying you probably don't want to be trading right around Powell. So again, team, trade1348.com. Uh, get your first month free, guys. Come see why thousands upon thousands and thousands of people are printing every single day with the, with the strategies that we are teaching you guys. So I'm going to grab lunch. I'm going to uh, make some uh, TikToks and Instagram uh, reels for you guys too. So make sure that you guys follow me over there. Short the VIX one uh, is the username for all of those uh, over there. It's Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Tick, TikTok, all the same. Um, but team, awesome week, man. Awesome week. Um, absolutely crushed it as we usually do. Uh, we have that masterclass for you guys coming out on Sunday. So make sure that you guys are ready for that. Those of you guys that aren't in masterclass yet, click upgrade on a uh, platform, go to your subscriptions area, click get master, and you can join us in on all the fun. But other than that team, make sure you guys hit that like button on the way out. Powell just doing what Powell does over here. So everybody, there's no reason to do anything really crazy today. Other than that team, make sure you guys are hopping in with us in Print City. Peace.